I declare the congregation open. My name's Andy Schofield, I'm the Vice-Chancellor, and it is a great pleasure to welcome members of the university, guests, but particularly you at the front here, graduating today. Um, it's great to have you here, it's great to be able to welcome you in person on what is a very special occasion. And we're thrilled to be able to have this celebration. It feels particularly special to be here to mark your achievements given what we've all faced during the pandemic. It has been an incredibly difficult time to be a student, as if that wasn't hard enough anyway. We're very aware that you've had to overcome unprecedented challenges of your own to complete your degree. I guess it could have been slightly worse. You could have been graduating this time last week and you would have had to endure uh, temperatures that were record-breaking and doing that with a gown and a hat on, I can tell you, is no small feat. You've wisely chosen uh, a cooler day to graduate on. It is a graduation that is a testament to your resilience and determination and it also reflects the support that you will have enjoyed from your tutors and lecturers, from family and friends who will be feeling justifiably proud of you today. And today we are celebrating the achievements of students from Lonsdale College, and I'm sure that that college affiliation has played a very important part during your time here. Colleges are particularly important in providing the support and the community, the social life, and helping to form lifelong friendships. Of course, they're also great for creating well-natured intercollegiate rivalries and competitions too. However you've got here, as you receive your degree today, I do offer you our most sincere congratulations. Today, we're also celebrating our uh, Alumni Award recipient, Tom Cheesewright, uh, about whom we will hear a little more. So I'm very pleased to welcome you to today's ceremony. Now, degree ceremonies are obviously formal occasions, as you can see, but they are events to be enjoyed. 
So I do strongly encourage you all here to applaud our graduates enthusiastically and appropriately at, at the right time, obviously, in the ceremony. Um, it is a day of celebration, um, and it's a day that I suspect at this point in the afternoon may start to extend into the evening and even into the night. Enjoy it. You've earned it. There are no easy degrees here at Lancaster, and every one of them has to be earned. And it's earned through commitment, through dedication, and through sheer hard work. And we're celebrating the fact that each of you graduating today has proven that you've got the intelligence and also the resilience to rise to a challenge, and more than that, to overcome it. Graduation ceremonies recognise the significant commitment that you have given to your studies and to your chosen field. You will stand shortly and walk across the stage. Take your time, enjoy the moment. The steps you're making across that stage are symbolic of the hard work you've put in. And then you step beyond me and down from the stage, and they are steps into that future, that future which will hold exciting new opportunities, the future that awaits you with your Lancaster degree. And today, therefore, marks the end of an era, but also a new beginning as an alumni of Lancaster University. You're joining a community of thousands of Lancaster graduates from every country of the world, practically, in a network that we hope will provide support, advice and friendship throughout your lives. So do please stay in touch with us. Our students and our graduates are amongst our finest ambassadors, and it's our hope that wherever your future takes you, you will continue to represent your alma mater by becoming engaged in your local communities, helping us to build our reputation as a world-leading institution while you change the world for the better. And while you're doing that, we will be working hard to keep up our end of the bargaining and securing the enduring value of the qualification that you've completed. Depending on whichever league table you look at, we're in the top dozen or so of more than 130 universities in the UK and rising up the international league tables too, currently 122nd uh, out of more than 1,000 universities ranked by the times higher in the world. And we aim to be in the top 100 We've also seen recently the published results from the Research Excellence Framework, which is an independent assessment of research quality and impact, and Lancaster has been placed 21st out of 157 universities in the Times Higher and above eight Russell Group institutions. It's an excellence that is revealed right across our disciplinary mix, and it allows us to bring together research communities to deliver answers to complex, multidisciplinary problems. Lancaster's strengths in research, teaching and engagement and investment in the student experience reflect our distinctive university community. Lancaster is and will remain a university that is open to the world. We have a network of overseas campuses in China, in Germany, Ghana and in Malaysia, in addition to our many regional partnerships. These campuses form a key part of a global community with one third of our undergraduate students studying overseas, supported with a strong mobility programme to equip our graduates to become truly global citizens. At present, that means that there are over 8,000 students studying for a Lancaster degree, but outside of the UK. Here in Lancaster, we're particularly proud of the fact that we welcome students from 183 countries worldwide and that our staff come from all parts of Europe and beyond. It brings a very rich diversity onto campus that not only has benefits educationally, it also helps prepare our students for life in an increasingly global and connected society. Success in whatever form it takes is inherently about people, and behind each success that we will celebrate walking across the stage today will be a team of, of family, of friends, of colleagues who've worked together to help you achieve the dreams and aspirations uh, that you have. And on this special day, I would just ask those of you graduating to take a moment uh, in all of the celebration and congratulations that you'll be receiving, just to thank those who supported you and encouraged you through those really tough times in your degree. I'm sure they will appreciate that too. And it is wonderful that we can have so many of your friends and family here to join us today.
So today you're joining a special community. Like over 150,000 others, you're about to become alumni of this great university. Ours is a university that expresses the very best of today's world. High achievers, great thinkers, top leaders, people making a difference in communities both local and global, in industry and in charity, in private companies and in the public services. You have come here from very different backgrounds and you will go on to end up living and working in very different locations. But all of you are part of a community and you are all bound together by one common history. So when you leave here, you will take something of Lancaster with you. Memories, of course, the friends and friendships that you've made, the tutors, lecturers who've taught and inspired you, the knowledge that you've gained, what you've learned from your studies. But above all, I hope that what you take away from Lancaster is what you've learned about yourselves, that if you persevere, it pays off. If you follow your dreams, you can and will achieve great things. So, congratulations once again. I wish you all the very best for your future, whatever path you choose to take. Enjoy the ceremony. Thank you. Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, I present these members of Lonsdale College who are worthy to receive first degrees of the university. For the degree of Master of Economics, Kyle Murray. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts, William George Chamberlain. <laughs> Ian Chan. <laughs> William Emerson. Damope Fakoyode, <laughs> Megan Jameson, <laughs> Declan Sean Judge, <laughs> Arjun Katecha, <laughs> Pei Yi Liang, <laughs> Nathan Lingham. Hannah Susan Mottram Anushka Sandesh Rainey Zakir Jasmine Salmon Hall Shireen Wing Wing In Su Thomas Aaron Waite, Simran Ojala, for the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration, Clementine Loveday Almond, Omar Baggett. Peter Balchev. <laughs> Cla
Chloe Louise Baybutt. <laughs> Eleanor Louise Bray. <laughs> Lisa Eva Berger. <laughs> Christina Costes Rodriguez. <laughs> Rachel Lynn Danks. Alvaro Diaz de Bustamante. <laughs> Silvia Garcia Gonzalez. <laughs> Ellie Louise Giles. <laughs> Vera Hansen da Costa e Silva. <laughs> Rebecca Yasmin Hawley. Pedro Herrera, <laughs> Melody Lopez, <laughs> Dunya Masudi, <laughs> Jamie Jack Matheson, <laughs> Alicia Louise McMillan. Say Mipuri Mabu Bani, <laughs> Anna Luisa Ortega Hernandez, <laughs> Catherine Quinn, <laughs> Belen Sanchez Campillo, <laughs> Declan David Tomlinson. Matthew Thomas Walker, <laughs> Jade Woodford, By my authority as Vice-Chancellor, I confer upon these members of Lonsdale College the degrees for which they have been presented. Very well done to all of you. Congratulations. Vice-Chancellor, I present to you Tom Cheeswright for the Award of Outstanding Alumnus of the Year. Tom is a distinguished member of an alumni community that, as we have heard, numbers over 150,000 people across the globe. As we recognise his achievements through this award, we also acknowledge and celebrate the wider successes of all Lancaster graduates and the important part they continue to play in the life of our university. Tom Cheeswright is an applied futurist who advises global brands and businesses on the trends of tomorrow, helping them build strategies for sustainable success while providing the flexibility to deal with increasing levels of uncertainty, particularly around the role of technology. He's an experienced writer, broadcaster and presenter with over 2,000 appearances on TV and radio to his name across the BBC, Channels 4 and 5, Sky News and many other international media outlets. As an influential and much sought after speaker, his clients range from commercial giants like BMW, Unilever and Kellogg's to schools, universities and charities. Considering the upheavals of the last two years and the rapid adoption of improved digital technologies to counter the business challenges of the pandemic, Tom could be forgiven for saying, I told you so. But as he himself comments, looking into the future and helping companies to plan for it 
it is an increasingly technology driven in an increasingly technology driven world does not make him a crystal ball gazer or a seer with supernatural powers indeed for someone who spends much of his time trying to map the future he never predicted how useful his mechatronic engineering degree would be for his future career essentially an ideas man tom is quick to credit his action packed time at lancaster for equipping him with the tools to be a professional thinker out of the box for the 21st century. He describes falling in love with the Lancaster campus inside 25 seconds, and he threw himself into student life with great enthusiasm, being elected college president of Lonsdale, working with the student union, and becoming a regular contributor to Bellrig FM. Alongside this on-air experience, he learned to engage large audiences, like the 1,500 NUS members he addressed at the union's annual conference. Tom's first job was in technology marketing with a company called Noiseworks in Maidenhead, and he suggests this was the making of him. His understanding of science, technology, and engineering, and his ability to speak about them in user-friendly ways soon had him jetting all over the world, talking and writing about science. In 2005, he decided to branch out on his own, setting up a range of businesses, including The Lever, a digital agency noted for its content-driven marketing. In 2012, he started The Book of the Future in Manchester. Considering himself a futurist already, without being able to pin down exactly what that meant, Tom found clients coming out of the woodwork to engage with him, and he began to see a coherence to their questions. From this point on, he has never looked back probably a wise choice for one who is striving hard to unlock the future's potential. In recent years, Tom has remained closely involved with Lancaster, delivering the keynote speech at the 2021 Professional Services Conference and engaging with students as part of the university's Capital Connections programme, which aims to raise career aspirations. Tom is worried about the next 20 years because what he sees is a fundamental lack of awareness of the radical changes necessary to cope with a future in which as many as 40% of jobs will be automated. Despite his concerns, though, he remains optimistic. As he says, we haven't got this far by being stupid. Human nature is essentially good and creative, and we find solutions. Tom Cheese Wright's achievements over the last 20 years should act as a reminder of the success that is possible with commitment and dedication. Our world faces so many challenges, far more indeed than when each of you first arrived at Lancaster. When you leave today as graduates, you will have the chance to make a real difference by putting the things you've learned here to good use. Whatever path you choose, whatever opportunities and obstacles you face, like Tom and many other alumni before you, be the best that you can be for yourselves, your families, and the wider communities in which you live and work. Vice-Chancellor, it is my honour to present Tom Cheeseright for the Award of Outstanding Alumnus of the Year. Vice Chancellor, fellow members of the university, honoured guests. I get asked to do a lot of speeches in my work, but I can honestly tell you that very few briefs are as challenging as this one. The easy part is saying thank you. This was an utterly unexpected award, and all the more important and meaningful coming from an institution that's played such an enormous part in so many aspects of my life. I left Lancaster 22 years ago with three things, experiences and education, and relationships. My experiences here were many and varied. I spent a lot of time in the JCR, Lonsdale JCR, not just in the bar, actually working as president, in the Students' Union as an officer, but also cleaning floors, driving a delivery van, serving pints, mentoring younger students, and I even had a short-lived career as a very, very bad party DJ. I used to borrow the college's decks and speakers and set myself up playing parties around the campus and in town. It was a useful little sideline as an earner, but I'm sad to say Ibiza never came calling. 
So when I left Lancaster, I left a more rounded individual. It, actually, in every sense of the word. A <laughs> diet of bitter at Lonsdale Bar and bacon sandwiches from the sadly missed Diggles did not do anything for my waistline. Nonetheless, I had more weight to my character in every sense. In fact, so much weight that Claire Geddes, now head of governance here, but then Sugar House manager, nicknamed me Fat Robbie. As in, I looked like a fat Robbie Williams. <laughs> so I left with more weight to my character. But what he did not leave with was a top-class degree. All that time spent working on students' union campaigns and in the JCR, and if we're really honest, in the Sugar House, in the Carlton, and in the pub, meant that my scores suffered somewhat. I actually bumped into my final year project tutor earlier and did apologise. But I learnt something perhaps more important. I learnt that I was not going to be an engineer, and I learnt that my skills really lay in communications. That ability to take complicated concepts, particularly around technology, and translate them quickly into things that other people could understand. And that understanding about myself set me in good stead for the rest of my career. The third thing I left Lancaster with was relationships. So many of my great friends still today were made here, particularly through the Students' Union activities. But most importantly of all, I met Monica. We met working at the Sugar House together, and we were friends for a while. After a few years, through some persuading and prodding and prompting, I finally realised I loved her. And so many of those nice things that Nick spoke about would not have been possible without her support. So I left here with experience and education and relationships. And that's the easy part of this talk, to say thank you for those things and say thank you for this award. The hard part is thinking about what I can pass on to you. What have I learned in the last 22 years since my graduation that might be useful to you as you enter that world of work so disrupted as you heard about before? Well, I think there are three skills, three skills that keep coming up and up again in my research on the future of work, the future of education, three skills that actually I'm trying to inculcate in my own children now. And I think if you work on these three skills that I call the three C's, you'll set yourselves in very good stead for your careers. The first C is what I call curation, the ability to discover and qualify information. In this age of accelerated change, when there are so many untruths out there online, the ability to ask difficult questions and qualify the answers has never been more important. Be the person who asks the stupid question. You're almost certainly uncovering something that other people have ignored, an assumption that shouldn't be made. And the chances are there's lots of other people in the room who just aren't brave enough to ask it. The second thing is creativity. The engine of innovation, the engine of all business. Exercise your creativity. It's not innate, it's a muscle. It could be something completely new. It could be iteration of an existing idea. It could be recombination. But it can be practiced, it can be learnt, it can be honed. And thirdly, communication. The ability to tell stories that cut through has never been more important. It doesn't have to be like this, stood in front of a podium. Maybe your strengths lie in design or code or the written word. But practice telling stories. It will do an enormous amount of good in your future careers. So congratulations, you've achieved so much already. But I can tell you the learning curve only gets steeper from here. Think about those three C's, the ability to curate, create and communicate. Practice those skills at work and in your hobbies. And I think you'll give yourselves a great platform for a successful future career. Congratulations and thank you very much.
Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, I present these members of Lonsdale College who are worthy to receive first degrees of the university. For the degree of Bachelor of Science, Vera Adez Abunum. <laughs> Julio Jose Alonso Ortega. <laughs> Nicholas Arif Aziz. <laughs> Mohammed Bahadur. Annie Mae Barras. <laughs> Thomas Robert Barrett. <laughs> Maya Bubam. <laughs> Felix Beam Asgain. <laughs> Mohammed Aslan bin Hassan. Nawan bin Mohammed Najib. <laughs> Jessica Ann Blamfin. <laughs> Eloisa Grace Braithwaite. <laughs> Dominic Brown. <laughs> Reese Brown. Luke Edward Burnett, <laughs> Wan Ting Chen, <laughs> Guillermo Chie Alvarez de Buego, <laughs> Daniel Craven, <laughs> Hannah Cunningham, <laughs> Abigail Daly. Alexander Ross David Yen. <laughs> William Joseph Dowd. <laughs> Kean Paul Denise. <laughs> Caitlin Emery. <laughs> ben Ferguson Evans. William George Farah, <laughs> Mitchell Reese Field, <laughs> Christopher Richard Fletcher, <laughs> Holly Charlotte Foster, <laughs> Maya Gaylor. <laughs> Isaac Geisler. Ewan Gordon. <laughs> William Alexander Owen Gray. <laughs> Natalie Emmy, Emma Green. <laughs> Mathis Claude Augustin Guerrero dos Santos. Jack Alexander Hardy. <laughs> Joshua Simon Harden Higgs. <laughs> Olivia Jane Hogan. <laughs> Cameron Kaliva Anthony Hoppo. <laughs> George Frederick Houghton. Yash Jaini. <laughs> Martin Javel. 
Theodore Johnston. Ishiani Sue Kashora. Keith Kembo. Edward Key. Louis Donald James Kirby. David Kovacs. One Hand Benson Kwa. Karyan Karen Law. Sebastian Law. Daniel Lewis. Monthawadi Lodjan Naran Gron. Ignacio Simeon Lopez. Jerushan Mahathan. Georgina Ellen Makins. Cameron Macy. Amy Lauren McBride. Tyler McKay. Paul McCarthy. Daniel John McEwen. Petrada Mikantrong. <laughs> Maya Mejay Yeska. <laughs> Hendrik McCone. <laughs> Kritia Ratha. <laughs> Amiran Matani. Alex Fergus Montgomery. Sandia Satesh Nair. Sarah Catherine Nevin. Nicholas Newnham. Danae Nicolou. Caledon Fenn Northall. <laughs> Nafisa Adigaba Oyepeju Agongobo. <laughs> Sophia Del Vale Ortego Santos. <laughs> Natalia Anna P Pachuska. Nagar Pahezgar. <laughs> Rikesh Patel. <laughs> Eleanor Victoria Platt. <laughs> Sadia Kurashi. <laughs> Juaru Raimundo. Edward James Ramsey. <laughs> Joshua Caradog Reese. <laughs> Benjamin Graham Rickard. <laughs> Megan Charlotte Ridd. <laughs> Daniel David Rilly. <laughs> Christopher James Roberts. Stephen Jack Robinson. <laughs> Jasmine Holly Ambarobi. <laughs> Javier Rodriguez. <laughs> Edward Stanley James Rothwell Brooks. 
Jada Joan Anastasia Sandy Hirsch. Kristala Sava. Abby Joan Shannon. Lucia Sierra Mandia. Megan Rebecca Slater. Inez Sophia Soz Pedro. Ludes Sotero Burrell. Jacob Harry Tatum. Ben James Taylor. Oliver Jack Tomlinson. Rebecca Louise Torn. Konstantinos Zagaris. Kevin Peter Varghese. Matthews Vatakota Yil. Yun Sen Wang. Michael Robert Warringer. Henry Wilde. Ching Nam Wong. Peeling Zhang. Jing Wen Zhu. By my authority as Vice-Chancellor, I confer upon these members of Lonsdale College the degrees for which they have been presented. Many, many congratulations. Well done to all of you. We've had whoops of joy, we've had smiles, we've had stern concentration crossing the stage, uh, but we've, above all, we've had a wonderful celebration of our graduates who deserve it. Uh, thank you to you all. But now I must declare closed the congregation of the University of Lancaster. Long may the university prosper. Yeah.